Hi, my name is Herbert van der Sampel at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. My Twitter handle is hvdsomp. And I would like to give you a quick overview of Resourcing. Resourcing was a collaboration between NISO and the Open Archives Initiative. It was funded by the Sloan Foundation and JISC in the UK. And the goal of the effort was to devise a specification for web-based synchronization of resources. What the web-based aspect in here means really is that the subjects of the synchronization are web resources identified by HTTP URIs and that HTTP is used as the basic uh, communication protocol for synchronization. But on top of that, it also means that no more is required of the servers involved in synchronization than to be on the web. So here is a way to describe the problem that is at the core of resourcing. There is a source and a source is a server that makes resources available on the web. And these resources change over time. They get created, they get modified and they get deleted. And then there are destinations. They are also servers and these destinations leverage some of the resources of the source. That is because these destinations typically run applications that involve the source's resources, for example, discovery or preservation services. And then the problem is that these destinations want to keep in step as the resources change at the end of the source. So one could depict this uh, as follows. What we see here as uh, a source with three resources uh, a resource with URI A, URI B and URI D at a certain moment in time. And then as time goes by, things happen to these resources. <clears throat> a gets updated at a certain moment in time. A bit later, D gets updated. Then at some point, both, e, uh, both A and B get updated at the same moment. And then later on, C gets created and D gets deleted, and then C gets updated, and so on and so forth. And so the goal of the resource sync effort was to design an approach for resource synchronization that was aligned with the web architecture and that has a fair chance of adoption by different communities. But there's a whole range of use cases that are within the scope of the resourcing uh, problem domain. For example, this includes a one-to-many scenario where one has a source server with resources here at the left-hand side, and these resources need to be duplicated, mirrored to different destination servers uh, across the web. An example of such an environment is the mirroring of the archive.org collection to mirrors around the world. At the other end of the spectrum is the many-to-one synchronization where there are different resource collections distributed across the web and there's a destination that wants to collect these resources and remain in sync with them as they evolve. Examples of uh, this type of use case include uh, CORE, which is an aggregator of institutional repositories, the Digital Public Library of America, and Europeana. The solution that came out of the effort <clears throat> consists of the source communicating about the state of its resources. And there's really three types of communication. On one hand, the source can publish an inventory of its resources that is really a snapshot of the state of its resources at a certain moment in time. The source can also publish changes that's basically an enumeration of all the change events that occurred during a given temporal interval. And then it can also notify 
about changes. This means rather than a destination having to come look for a list of changes, in this case, the source is actually actively going to push information about those changes to destinations. All these communications about resources obviously need a payload. At the core of that payload is the HTTP URI of the resource itself. When it comes to communication about changes, additional information is provided. That is the change type. Is the resource created, updated or deleted? And the daytime of the change. In addition to that, it is possible and many times very useful to also provide metadata and links pertaining to the resource. And we'll see examples of that in a bit. The communication payloads obviously need to be serialized and for resource sync, we decided to base the serialization on the sitemap document format. The sitemap protocol is widely used by web servers to advertise their resources to search engines. And you see here what such a sitemap typically looks like. There is the encapsulating URL set element and then per resource that a web server wants to advertise to search engines, there is a URL block. And that URL block contains a mandatory lock element that contains the URI of the resource and optional additional information such as the last modification date. And again, there is a URL block per resource that the web server advertises. Well, we use that document format as the basis of um, resourcing, but we extend them in two ways. We include an extension element RSLN to convey links and RSMD to convey metadata. And those elements can be used both at the root and at the URL block level. Again, we'll see an example of their use in a bit. Now I mentioned that the solution entails that the source may publish an inventory, publish changes and send notifications about changes. I will go into some detail about the former and the latter. In order to allow a destination to perform an initial baseline synchronization, the source can publish a resource list. And that resource list is basically an inventory, it is a snapshot of the resources that exist at the end of the source at a specific moment in time. Such a resource list will, per resource, minimally list the resources you arrive. The process then consists of, well, the destination discovering where the resource list is, obtaining the resource list, parsing it, and for each of the URIs that are listed in this resource list, dereference them to obtain a representation of the associated resource. So going back to our overview of the evolution of resources at the end of a source, let's presume our source wants to publish a resource list at time X. Then we're basically going to look what the state of these resources is at that moment in time. So that means that C, this state of C will be included in the resource list. D not because it was deleted. We don't care about an old state uh, of C in the inventory. And the most recent states of A and B are the ones uh, listed here. So the resource list at TX will list resource A, resource B and resource C. Now this is uh, a serialization according to the extended uh, sitemap document format. And you see here the use of this extension element for metadata. And it is used here to say that this document is actually a resource list. So it's an inventory and it conveys the snapshot of the source's resources at this moment in time. We see a URL block that conveys the URI of a resource that is subject to synchronization. The last modification date of that resource is also conveyed. And in addition to that, we see use of the metadata element and a link element pertaining to the resource here with the URI in lock. 
the metadata element, as you can see, is used to convey a hash, a length, and a type. And hash and length could typically be used by the destination to determine whether the bit stream that was obtained by dereferencing the URI in log is actually accurate. And it would do that by computing the same kind of hash, MD5, and the length over the bit stream that was uh, retrieved and compare them with the values that were provided by the source. We also see that the link was provided and this is a link that basically says described by. It means it's a link that points at metadata pertaining to the resource with the URI in lock. So it turns out that this URI here is the URI of a Dublin Core metadata element in uh, XML that describes the resource that has this URI. Change notifications are introduced to allow destinations to continuously remain in sync with the source's evolving resources and to do so with low latency, which may be important for certain applications. A change notification conveys the resource change events as they actually occur. And for each event, again, it minimally lists the URI of the resource, but it also lists the nature of the change, creation, update, deletion, and the daytime of the change event. The process is such that the destination sits and waits until it receives a change notification and then acts upon it. For notifications that are about creation and update uh, of a resource, the destination will basically dereference the URI of the resource that is involved. And for deletions, it may decide to remove the local uh, bit stream that it has for that resource from its uh, collection. So going back to our depiction of the source and its evolving resources, what happens now is as changes occur, notifications are being sent. So here at TA, resource A is updated and a change notification is sent. Later on, resource D is updated at time B and a notification is sent about that. And then at time C, both A and B get updated at the same time and the notification is sent about that and so on and so forth. I would like to start wrapping up by describing three core characteristics of the framework. First of all, in addition to resource list and change notifications that I just touched upon, the resourcing framework specifies additional synchronization capabilities such as change list, resource dump, change dump, and so forth. Now, it is not so that in order to implement the standard, the source needs to support each of these capabilities. Rather, it decides on the basis of local or community requirements which of these capabilities to support and to combine. The capabilities that are supported are summarized in a document, again in the same uh, sitemap document format, that is called the capability list. Second, in order to support destinations in discovering whether and how a source supports the resource uh, sync framework, there are various discovery capabilities specified in the framework and they are all based on common web discovery mechanisms. For example, the notion of the well-known URI specified in RFC 5785 is used to lead to what is called a source description. It is the entry point to understand about the implementation of a source of the resourcing framework. Third, this quite a bit of documents involved in the framework. We talked about resource list, change list, just talked about capability and source description. The framework also uh, specifies a way that one can navigate throughout this framework, and this is based on typed links. So again, it's a follow your nose type of approach. Well, that about uh, wraps it up. I'd like to end with giving you uh, the status of this effort. 
First of all, the core specification, that is all the pool-based mechanism, so whereby the destination is pulling information from uh, the source, is now a standard NC NISO Z39.99-2014. The notification specification, which is about pushing uh, information from the source to the destination, is in beta as is an archive specification that I don't have the time for uh, to elaborate on. There's a growing implementation interest in the community and that is motivated by the desire and the understanding that it is time to move beyond just metadata and to start involving the content in our interoperability frameworks. As tools become available, they will be listed at the URI that you see at the bottom of this page here. Well, I would like to thank you for sitting through this presentation. You can find the specifications at uh, this URI at openarchives.org. There is also a Google group where you can engage in discussions with resourcing editors and uh, implementers. And I sincerely hope that you will consider the resourcing framework for your future projects. Thanks a lot.